What absurd things can the infamous Cruel Claw do in a reanimator Shaolin Bloomboro standard? That's what we're gonna find out today. So here is our Cruel Claw Reanimator deck for Bloomborough Standard, and this deck is pretty sweet. So we're built around the infamous Cruel Claw, one of the most hype mythics from the set. Three mana, three, three with Menace. When it deals combat damage to a player, we exile cards from the top of the library till we hit a non-land. We can cast that card by discarding a card rather than paying its mana cost. So essentially it's like an Itali ETB trigger if we can get in an attack with the infamous Cruel Claw. And the cool thing about this deck is we're really doing double duty with the Infamous Cruel Claw. So first, we're doing the obvious thing. Our deck has a ton of top end threats that we're hoping to just get in one attack with Cruel Claw and cast one of these essentially for free. So Trumpeting Carnosaur, Virtual Persistence, these massive six and seven drops that can also be removal in the early game. Vein Ripper, just really hard to deal with. Fraction Force Scourger being played as a three drop or as a seven drop if we hit it with Infamous Cruel Claw. So in our dream world, we play Infamous Cruel Claw on turn three. Turn four, we get in an attack, which the menace helps us get in that combat damage. And then we just spin into one of these cards and get this huge turn four that hopefully just wins us the game. But that's not all we're doing with Cruel Claw. The other thing we're doing with Cruel Claw is trying to turn its discard into an upside. We also have Bitter Reunion that lets us discard and draw, Charming Scoundrel discard and draw. Even our removal, Bitter Triumph, lets us discard a card. So why are we so excited to discard cards? Well, the other plan of our deck is to reanimate our huge top end things, not just once, but hopefully twice with Coiling Rebirth. So Coiling Rebirth, our new reanimation from Loomboro, it's five mana, it reanimates one of our creatures, but we can gift our opponent a card. And if we reanimate a non-legend, we get a 1-1 one, one token copy of it. So you probably notice our top end threats, we're not playing Italis, we're not playing Atroxes. Instead, we have Trumpety Carnosaur, Vein Ripper, and Phyrexian Flesh Gorger, which is kind of the worst of the bunch. Really, it's Carnosaur and Vein Ripper. So the idea is we can use our Cruel Claws and Bitter Reunions and Skarming Scoundrels to discard our big finishers. And then Coiling Rebirth can not just reanimate them once, but twice. And if we get two trumpeting carnosaurs we're going to discover five twice if we get two vein rippers it's almost unbeatable because if anything dies our opponent's getting drained for four for each creature that dies and it has ward sack a creature so if our opponent wants to kill it they're gonna have to sack something to trigger the drain mode and that's really the goal of the deck so high roll with infamous cruel claw and just cast these things or use cruel crawl to discard these cards double reanimate them with coiling rebirth and then hopefully win that way mana base pretty traditional standard stuff bunch of dual lands uh, we do have the full four creatures lands and surveil lands because they help us get cards in our graveyard in the sideboard for control we got some duresses and lilianas bunch of removal and sweepers for aggro and aclazots to gain some life and that is cruel claw reanimator for standard that's our deck for today so let's jump into some games and see what ridiculous things the infamous cruel claw can do thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the tokens signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtggoldfishmerch.com. It is time to do some Cruel Claw reanimating, and that eh, sounds fine. We got a lot of lands, but we have multiple removal spells, so hopefully... Hopefully we find some of our payoffs. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Golgari, eh? All right, Vein Ripper. Well, I mean, I guess a lot of lands is good if <laughs> you're going to draw all six drops. Opponent. Deep Cavern Bat. Yeah, I think we might as well just... Well, so we could let it go, and they take the Bitter Triumph, but then we got to pitch the Carnosaur. The question is... Yeah, I think we just kill it. I think at this point, because we have five lands, I don't think we want to price ourselves into having to uh, discard the Carnosaur because they might actually just want to cast it. Well, pitch the Swamp, draw a couple of cards. So many Vein Rippers. Well, look out, opponent. Once we get to a, uh, <laughs> once we get to six mana, you are in trouble. Liliana of the Veil. Sure, I guess that's fine. Drop it. Could use a. Cruel Claw or some reanimation. Raccoon Theater, eh? Well, let's just fire up this Vens. We do need to make sure Liliana isn't ultimate. We can let it discard a couple times. This actually works pretty well. We can get it with the Vens. Discard another. Well, let's discard the Black Leaf Cliffs. Discard the Black Leaf Cliffs. Draw Black Leaf Cliffs. Ah, this does let us pitch the Carnosaur annoying. to kill it if we want to, which we probably will have to because it's emptying our we hand. We all have things we'd rather forget. 
Let's pitch the Black Leaf Glyphs. Opponent. Ooh. Doing so. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Bitter Reunion on top. That can go Graveyard. Oh. Let's just kill Lily. We could haste in the Cruel Claw. But I think we need to kill the... We need to kill the Lily. This is the safest line. Just get rid of the Lily. Next turn. Oh. That's my cue to We can potentially haste in the Cruel Claw. Opponent Swamp and Mosswood Red Knight draw a card and all right. Well, if we draw an untapped land, we mean Vayner Ripper. If not, you know what? I think we're still. I think we're still gonna Cruel Claw. <laughs> we came here to Cruel Claw and Cruel Claw. We will haste it up. Combat attack you. Spin it to win it. Spin it to win it into. Ooh. All right. Cruelty of Gix. Yes, we will accept a Cruelty of Gix. Uh, and. Let's just go full, full cruelty. Take a peek at the hand. Aklazot's Liliana. And a bunch of removal. So the cruel call is gonna die no matter what. I guess we just take the Aklazots. I assume our opponent probably Liliana down ticks here, right? Enough with the mystery. Yeah, kills the cruel claw. I've come. I mean, Off now we go. get to we get to do the the reanimation thing, cruelty of Gix. We will take a coiling rebirth. <laughs> opponent we have a gift for you friend you get a land we get two trumpeting carnosaurs i think that's a, a fair trade well spin it to win it number one into another cruel claw sweet and spin it to win it number two into oh oh god in your birth opponent we have another gift for you it's your it's your birthday uh okay you get a card we will get two vein rippers <laughs> Just some good, clean, fair Bloomboro standard happening here. Your go, Mosswood Red Knight. Your go. And then we still have a Cruelty of Kicks. So even if our opponent kills stuff... Oh, God, they're going to do it. All right, they kill a Carnosaur. Thank you. Uh, Vein Ripper. Drain your Drain ya. Down to uh, 11. <laughs> I'm tired oh, of we'll secrets. discard a Vein Ripper. Sure. Are we passing? All right. Oh, God. Gosh, this game. This game. All right, let's take this. Uh, uh, we could take a Carnosaur. I kind of want the Luma. The Luma is going to be huge, and we do have a lot of land in the graveyard. Uh, yes, we will take your bear. Well, if this deck just does this all the time, this deck might actually be... We might have actually broke it this time. <laughs> Get back the Luma. Mill ya. Or mill ourselves, rather. Get back a few Magic the Gathering land cards. And then we can still play the Carnosaur. Uh, which we will. <laughs> what a game! Uh, bitter Reunion. Well, we'll just put that in hand. We'll go to combat. Do a little attacking at your face. And is this just game? I think it's game because if our opponent blocks, they just take so much main Ripper damage. Yeah. Well, that was pretty spectacular. My god. My goodness. <laughs> I was a little skeptical on Coiling Rebirth because I was thinking it was just like a worse version of a worse version of uh, the Cruelty of Gex, right? But it turns out if you're willing to play non-legends, which there's some good ones. We don't get to play a Troxa. We don't get to play a Tanley because they're legends. But if you're willing to reanimate Vein Rippers and Carnosaurs and eh, I guess also Flesh Gorgers to a lesser extent, um, the card's actually kind of insane. Double Carnosaur is kind of wild. Double Vein Ripper is also really ridiculous. Think about Double Vein Ripper. If our opponent wants to kill a Vein Ripper, they have to sack a creature, which is going to drain them for four, and then they're going to kill a Vein Ripper, which is going to drain them for four. So worst case, it's a 16-point life swing. We gain eight, our opponent loses eight. And that's, our opponent also has to like go down a card with a removal spell, and we still have a Vein Ripper left over. It's... Uh, it, it's not a guaranteed win, I guess, especially because like a Sunfall, but it is pretty close. Well, on to game two. Yeah, all right, this is fine. A little ramping, a little filtering, a little Carnosaurin, a little vein ripping now. Uh, well, we will definitely keep this land. Uh, about it. Land, go. Well, let's Black Leaf Glyphs, and I think we actually just go ramp mode with these Charming Scoundrels. Charming Scoundrel, treasure. Get in, hit ya. Charming Scoundrel is so good in this deck. Like, it's a treasure when we want to ramp. It fills the graveyard when we want to reanimate. It's a wicked roll, I guess, someday, for some reason. Well, play land. We almost never choose wicked roll. I guess there's times when wicked roll can just win the game in some scenarios, but uh, do we want a bitter reunion? We could just play another, another Scoundrel. 
I feel like this is the highest upside, right? So we make another treasure. If we just draw an untapped land next turn, we just get to cast a Carnus or a Vein Ripper. If we don't draw a land, then we can start Bitter Reunioning to find lands and fill the graveyard. Opponent Swamp and she, ooh. Huh, maybe we should have Bitter Reunion. That's pretty good against us. Well, uh, yeah, opponents, ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Magic gods smiling upon the infamous Cruel Claw here. Uh, yes. We would like to kill this Shieldred. We will discard a Vein Ripper. And then we will Bitter Reunion. Discard a Bitter Reunion. Draw, hopefully, a land. Yeah, well, okay. Land and Coiling Rebirth, not the worst. Let's get in hit ya. The question is, do we now we have this Coiling Rebirth, I kind of want to, yeah, play the other Bitter Reunion, and then we can discard the Carnosaur. I think I'd rather double Carnosaur than double double Vein Ripper. For our first one, at least. Yeah, let's pitch the Carnosaur. Ugh. Well, that didn't actually work out <laughs> because we didn't hit a land. Okay. I mean, we're still... Ooh, wow, that actually went bad in a bunch of ways. <laughs> Maybe we should not have pitched that Carnosaur and just kept those treasures. Another bitter triumph. Well, get in, I, I guess it's up to the Charming Scoundrels. We only need, what, seven, seven more turns of attacking with our two Charming Scoundrels, and we got them. Cruel Claw would actually be kind of it. Wow, they're going to tear asunder a one of our two Bitter Reunions. That's aggro. I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, you do you, opponent, but... I could see with one of them being like, okay, I don't want to get hasted by something. Two of them, though, you're not even really turning off... Oh, boy, we're a land short. Max punished for uh, sacking those treasures. <laughs> Thankfully, our opponent's just not doing much so we're kind of okay i feel like they have removal but they're like i don't really want to kill a charming scoundrel which again oh geeks's command okay well that's pretty good that gets rid of both charming scoundrels and gets the shield rid back come on land untap land untap land all right untap land opponent present time uh we're gonna take the carnosaurs two carnosaurs you get to draw a card, and let's see what we find. Ooh, there's a Cruel Claw, sure. You know what would be sweet is actually another Charming Scoundrel for haste. Cut down, that can go hand. Can you stop the weasel? <laughs> can you stop the weasel? Oh, another Gix's command. Oh, they didn't, beat the, they didn't get the Cruel Claw, though. They didn't get the Cruel Claw. Aw, all right, all right. Well, we untap. We draw, so I guess we're just hard casting Vein Ripper then. Still pretty good, still pretty good. Eklazots and Caustic Bronco. I mean, we have, re ooh, ooh, and a Cruel Claw. Opponent gives us the GGs. Wait, do we just win here? So if we kill the Eklazots, we drain need a nine. Cruel Claw, haste it, hit you for exactly nine. That's a Cruel Claw win. That's a Cruel Claw win. Here we come. Our opponent was right to try to get rid of the Bitter Reunions, but not enough because we had two and GG. And that was pretty spectacular. Wow. <laughs> Doing some cruel reanimation, I guess. We'll keep this. Hopefully we can surveil land into something to reanimate here. We have the Bitter Redemption, which or Reunion, which is nice if we find a Cruel Claw. Definitely don't need another Swamp. We have all the lands we'll ever need. A bonus. Oh boy, Control. Interesting. Well, Raccoon Theater, Charming Scoundrel. Yeah, we'll keep that. It's a body, at least. A bonus. Planes and passes. Well, that's Charming Scoundrel. A bonus. Mm, going to counter it. Well, let's play the... Th yeah, we'll play the Black Leaf Cliffs past the turn. A bonus. The Mori Vault. Oh, they're an artifact deck. That might be an issue. We don't actually have a super clean answer to Simulacrum Synthesizer. Ooh, even more lands. Well, all right, Bitter Reunion. Discard a mountain. Play a theater. Uh, we will mill the Carnosaur. All right, pass the turn. Opponent passing. Man, they're just going to counter us, aren't they, if we try to Cruelty of Gix. Let's play the Vent and wait. I think we need our opponent to, uh... Oh, interesting. Well, okay. Uh, let's kill that. I don't know what our opponent's up to. They do get a Karnstruck, though. 
A bonnet. Lad. Thran spider to make a construct. This might be an issue. Found it. Yeah. Simulacrum Synthesizer is a messed up magic card. It is a messed up magic card. Uh, play the land. Cruelty of Gix. I don't think this is going to be enough, though. We're going to read ahead. Reanimate the Trumpeting Carnosaur. Spin into a Coiling Rebirth that we can't play. Yeah, I think our opponent's got this one. All right, Simulacrum Synthesizer, eh? And counter spells, annoyingly. So, well, Duress is in. We don't really have ways to blow up artifacts. Maybe that, is that, I didn't think that was necessary in the standard format, but maybe, maybe it is necessary? Uh, go down the cut down. Bitter Triumph's fine. Uh, do we even want Shielder's Edict? Maybe not. Let's go down to Cruelty of Gix. Maybe one Charming Scoundrel. Let's try it like that. Goal one, keep the Synthesizer off the battlefield. I feel like our opponent's deck without Synthesizer is going to be about 100 times worse than with Synthesizer. Synthesizer is kind of one of those free win cards. Uh, if you have it, your deck's going to pop off and be absurd. If you don't have it, you're playing a bunch of janky artifacts. We'll see. We'll see. Well, theater, def man. So many lands! So many. I mean, I guess to some extent it's our fault for keeping a land heavy hand, but still. Oh god, the very, very magic arena thing. You keep the five lander, the top cards of your deck. Always, always just ten more lands. Yup. <laughs> Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, seven, eight, eight out of ten, eight out of ten. Fabrication Foundry pawn again. There, hey, there we go. So nine out of eleven hits you for one. Oh, bound it. Plays a land. Passes. Cruelty of Gix. Not uh especially helpful at the moment since we've only drawn lands this game. Takes the beats. I imagine they're flashing in their liberator. Nope. All right, no liberator. A bonnet. Shivan Reef. Thran Spider. So opponent keeping up a counter. Plays a Thran Spider and passes. Well, we draw Duress. It's probably better next turn. Let's just wait. I think the plan is next turn we can Duress into Cruelty of Gix. Pwn it. Add a car away. So hopefully they don't top deck Synthesizer this turn. That would be an annoyance. Pwn it. Passing. All right. Well, Duress you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so opponent has literally just a handful of every counter in existence. So we will take the three steps ahead. We will play the land. So anything we cast is going to get countered. Whiffs with Thran Spider stuff because their deck is all counter spells. Undeps. Stone Braid. We draw. Uh, another land somehow. Uh, well, well, that's Cruelty of Gix. About it, Adepts. Alright, I'm curious what they're trying to stone brain here. Name's Cruelty of Gix. Well, alright, we only have one of those left in our deck, so that's that's kind of fine. Oh, maybe we have... Can we take the other one out? Do we have zero left in our deck? Alright. Well, that is about the worst stone brain. I mean, I think we can resolve a Vein Ripper here, right? Mayo I We don't know what this one card is. It's... Theoretically, yet another counter, but it doesn't get negated. We can pay for no more lies. Wow, opponent getting frisky. All right. A grow gets in there, passes. Oh, play a land. Play the Vein Ripper. All right, we will pay for the no more lies. I mean, we're getting there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess if they get one more land, they can play the Cityscape Leveler. Ooh, they find a Simulacrum Synthesizer. Okay, that's... Concerning, that's a concern, that's a concern. They still have that negate in hand too, which is also annoying. Both cards left on top. Passes. Ooh, we draw a bitter triumph. I think we fire up a vent. Fire up a vent. Play a charming scoundrel. Make a wicked roll. Swing with everything. Uh, no looting. The problem our opponent has, if they want to kill the Vein Ripper with the Cityscape Leveler, they need to have a creature to sacrifice, because this is a cast trigger, so it's not going to be on the board. So I think what we do is, we swing here, and then on our opponent's upkeep, we Bitter Triumph the Thran Spider, and if they negate it, that's fine. If they don't negate it, they can Cityscape Leveler, but they can't kill the Vein Ripper. Plus they're taking 9, 10, 11, 12 here, down to 4? Well, I guess in theory they could have drawn... Wow! All right, that is very obnoxious. 
So we hit our opponent down to 11. We hit our opponent down to 8. But they killed our... They killed our Vein Ripper, which is an issue. Opponent plays a land. They know about the Coiling Rebirth. They don't know about the Bitter Triumph. We're still in a relatively good spot. Opponent passing. We draw a Bitter Triumph. A one, two, three. Fire up the Vent. And then... Let's do a little mapping. Play the land. One, two... Actually, let's just map again. I was thinking we were going to fire up the other vent, but I kind of want to leave up the bitter. The bitter triumph, I think, is more important. All right, let's crack the map on the vent. Vein Ripper, uh, which we will keep. Hit ya. Opponent's going to fire up the anchorage, which we will bitter triumph. Opponent says yes. They tap their anchorage. Sure. <laughs> oh, auto tapper. Opponent goes to three. Opponent adapts. I think we found our way past his synthesizer. Maybe. Maybe. Because we got double vein ripper coming, and I don't think our opponent can beat double vein ripper. The negates out of. Yeah, opponent scoops it up. Oh, all the counters in the world, but in the end, we able, uh, we're able we able to sneak our way through. Let's go down one bitter reunion from one deadly. We might need the deadly cover up. Let's draw some duresses. Opponent is playing an insane amount of counter spells. <laughs> a truly, a truly over the top number. We would like to like duress into Liliana is probably our best start. Like just full on hand attack. The good news is we have some very powerful lines. The bad news is opponent has Simulacrum Synthesizer and that's a card that can kind of pop off. Although maybe it's not as scary as it looked at first. If our opponents, <laughs> I mean, they're like whiffing with their Thran Spider. They might actually not be playing that many artifacts in their synthesizer deck. It might be a control deck with just a few artifacts. There is artifact hate. We're just not playing it because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know we needed to. But maybe, maybe we actually need to be able to blow up artifacts. That is a thing we could add to our sideboard if we wanted to. Well, I mean, we're gonna keep this. We don't have a duress, but opponents mulliganing very aggressively. It'll be interesting to see if the big scorecards make a. Bigger impact now that rotate. Wow, down to four. Okay. Well, I think our odds might have increased, although the sad thing is Simulacrum Synthesizer is still a card that can steal a win even with a very few cards in hand if our opponent can just uh, roll into it. Ooh, Liliana Coiling Rebirth. Okay, okay. About it. Ooh, passing. Well, play a land, Liliana. You got a counter? You got a counter? No. That is what we want to see. Well, take up. We will discard a bitter triumph. Oh, they didn't have the right mana. Oh, I was wondering why they didn't count. Yeah, opponent. The Liliana on the mole is just so brutal. Well, that looked pretty scary. But in the end, we managed to uh, sneak past the control deck and rank up to gold three. <laughs> Did we break it? Gold three. Go three. That's what we get for not playing much arena since MH3 <laughs> launch. We're all the way at the bottom. But uh, all right, let's see what our, what we're up against. This. Oh, all right. If we had one more land, we could keep this because of bitter reunion. But we gotta we gotta ship that one. All right, this will keep. This hand's actually not bad. So we need to get Vein Ripper in the graveyard. We probably need the. Well, we have the removal that can get it in the graveyard. Maybe we just get rid of the bitter reunion. Let's try that. So we can bitter triumph, pitch the Vein Ripper. Hopefully ramp into Coiling Rebirth. Opponent props eidetic memory, sure. I don't swamp, and let's just Charming Prince, make a treasure. And hit you. Down at 19. Opponent, Island, and Steam Core Scholar. That is a good one with props eidetic memory. Discards and Aklazots. Well, let's Black Cleaf Cliffs, Bitter Triumph, discard the Vein Ripper, hit you with the Charming Scoundrel. I mean, so the plan here is double Vein Ripper. We'll see if it works. We would prefer our opponent to tap down. Double Vein Ripper would be pretty good, though. Opponent Island and Duelist of the Mind. Chart, of course. All right. Gonna grow the dorks, grow the dorks. Get some counters. Oh, play the land. I, we got to do this now. Uh, yes, opponent, you get to draw a card. We, though, will get two Vein Rippers. We're going to go attacking because this Charming Scoundrel dying actually hits for four. Opponent blocks. <laughs> Double Drade. 
<laughs> All right, I mean, two main rippers on turn four. Is that enough to win a game of standard? That is the question about it. The ward is also pretty relevant here. If our opponent wants to kill our vein ripper, they're gonna have to sack a creature, which their deck probably doesn't have that many creatures because they need a lot of card draw. We did give our opponent a card, which I guess is a drawback. Opponent going to duress and commit a crime and draw a card. I mean, our opponent could still win here. It's not impossible. We kind of wanted that bitter triumph because this is gonna be big and vigilant. Found it. Counter. We lose our big vein ripper, but we hit for eight. We get rid of that duelist of the mind mage. Drain you down to six. All right, they're gonna tide binder a trigger. So we're gonna drain for six and they're gonna make the token vein ripper lose its abilities. They're trying to make sure they hit the right trigger. <laughs> I think that's the the challenge. They need to hit the one that's attached to the living Vein Ripper. I mean, we are down to one card in hand, and our opponent's full of card draws, so if we don't draw something, our opponent could still easily win here. All right, opponent counters. Takes six. We go up to 30. Opponent goes down to eight. And then cuts down. Okay. Well, Vein Ripper's down. Oh, we draw a Cruelty of Gex that would be great if we could cast it, but we can't. Invasion of Amonkhet. Mills three cards. We'll discard a Vein Ripper. Opponent draws a card. And then they get to flip it? Yeah, I think we might actually we might actually be dead now. Getting stuck on getting stuck on lands to not be able to cast this cruelty of gigs is a problem, because now our opponent gets to do the invasion of Amonkhet thing. They get to get a Vein Ripper. And it seems pretty possible that they're sitting on a counter spell of some kind. I mean, maybe they take a... Oh, they go with Aklazots. All right, we definitely need to draw land here. Oh, what a brutal way to lose. <laughs> what a brutal way to lose. Opponent, Steve Gore Scholar to draw a bunch of cards. Now they get a bunch of counters. Wait, do we actually have a way to win from here or do we just scoop? Man, we were so close. Opponent goes attacking. I mean, we'll discard a Carnosaur. Opponent hits us for 10. Yeah, we're just locked. All right. That was brutal. Man, that fit, lacking that fifth land was so bad for us. And now Arena doing their auto sideboarding trick that they love so much. This might actually be like a reasonable enough sideboard plan. I don't know about the deadly cover up. Maybe we just go shield or Edict. Let's try it like that. Well, we kind of did the thing. We didn't draw a Cruel Claw. We did the thing, but it turns out our opponent uh, managed to have the, the answers. Oh, if we had hit one more land though and could have cast that Cruelty of Gigs, I think we would have, that was like the real issue. We did the thing, but we never drew land number five. So then we just got locked out of playing Magic for the rest of the game. Well, theater. Top card is a Bitter Triumph, which I believe we need to keep. Uh, about it. Tap land. Oh, <laughs> desert land, okay. Well, let's play a mountain, run out the Charming Scoundrel. Make a treasure. Hit you for one. Down to 19. Do they have the prophesidetic memory? No. Evangel of Synthesis, sure. Well, let's play the tap land. Play the bitter reunion. Discard a trumpeting carnosaur. Pass the turn. So this gives us the possibility of getting in a hasty cruel claw hit at some point. Opponent land. And deep cavern bat. All right. I mean, we have two. We have two removal spells, so this doesn't just beat us or anything. We can also still just go for the cruel claw high roll if we want to. Although it might be better just to kill things this turn. We do have a carnosaur in the graveyard, so spinning into reanimation is really good. Wow, they take cruel claw. Interesting. Gets and hits us. Down to seventeen. We draw a mountain. Well, let's. Virtue away the bat. Play the swamp. Charming scoundrel. Make a treasure. So we can still cast the bitter triumph if we want to. We also have made so many treasures. We can, if our opponent taps down, we can just play a virtue of persistence. And uh, there's a Carnosaur. There's an Aklazots passing. They could have counters. Play the cruel claw. But we're not gonna haste it. We're just gonna we're just gonna play it fairly. 
Because I think the odds of our opponent being able to kill it are pretty high. I mean, the primary goal at the moment is actually just to get our opponent to tap down, and then we can get down the Virtue, and I think the Virtue should win us the game. So that's kind of goal number one. Like, can we manipulate the game in a way that our opponent taps down because they are a blue deck? Cruel Claw does help pressure this, right? Like, our opponent probably doesn't want to get hit by Cruel Claw. We could also draw Duress at some point. Opponent, pass it. We draw. Wow, they don't have an answer? Okay, I was not expecting that. All right, spin it to win it, spin it to win it. Shieldred's Edict. Yeah, I mean, that is that is worth it. Each opponent sacks a non-token creature. We'll discard a Charming Scoundrel. We're going to wait. We're going to be patient with this Virtue. Because patient is a Virtue. Eh, <laughs> <Bone> it. <laughs> Restless Reef. I mean, hitting a removal spell is kind of a low roll with Cruel Claw, but it's also more likely after sideboarding. Go to Gaba. Wow, opponent takes the hit again. What is their hand? Spin it to win it, spin it to win it. Duress is actually nice. We will accept this, because this might let us get down this Virtue. Duress you. Let's see what you were holding. What in the world are these five cards? Is it all lands? Gotta be counters, right? Counters make sense. Can be removal, or 100% they kill the Cruel Claw. There is no way they don't kill the Cruel Claw if they have the opportunity. Three steps ahead. What? Three steps ahead to draw? I think we're in good shape. Invasion, couple of creatures, Prophesidetic Memory. Do we even care about Invasion? They're gonna make us discard. I guess there's a way that could go wrong. Yeah, let's take Invasion. Play the Virtue. And Pestered, gonna hold on to the land for future discard fodder. Duelist of the Mind. Prophesidetic Memory. And Evangelist Senses, sure. But I mean, we get to we get to start reanimating, which is exactly what we were hoping for. Found it, discards a land, gets some counters, and we still get to get in a Cruel Claw hit, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, well, let's take Trumpeting Carnosaur. Spin into a Bitter Reunion. Discard a Mountain, draw a couple cards. Bitter Triumph, kill the Duelist, Duress you, sure, Theater, Duel of Scrying, land, I guess it can stay on top because we're going to get rid of it anyway, and then we will just haste up the team, and I don't know, this isn't exactly, is this Lethal? They block three, so they take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I guess it is actually Xaxes, and well, game one did not go very well, game two though, game two went very, very well. Cruel Claw. We didn't even run well with, like, I mean, that's the thing about Cruel Claw, right? We still get a look at the card. Obviously, the dream is we're hitting <laughs> Coiling Rebirth, Vein Ripper, Carnosaur, Virtue, but hitting that Duress there was actually, like, super good. It let us resolve the Virtue. So even when we low roll, it's still not bad. I kind of want another. Let's go one Liliana. And actually, you know what? Let's go with the cut down too. Being on the draw here, we just don't want to get immediately snowballed. I think our dream is actually just turn one duress. I think our opponent's deck is very dealable. Dealable? Is that even a word? But I think we can deal with our opponent's deck. I mean, we're going to keep this. We have two removal spells. If there's not an early Prophesidetic Memory, I think that's the key card in the deck and the matchup. If they can start snowballing Prophesidetic Memory, things go a lot worse. So no duress, sadly. Found it. Crimes us. Well, tap land go. We'll see how good these virtues are. Opponent land and duelist of the mind. Sure. So black leaf cliffs and kill the duelist of the mind. Island invasion of Amonkhet. Uh, we will discard a mountain, I guess. Well, okay. There's the cruel claw. Get it down. Make our opponent have the answer. Opponent passes. Here we come. Show us that removal spell. Wait, they don't have it? Oh, <gasps> they don't have it. Okay, what do we find? What do we find? Let's get something big. Tishana's Tidebinder. Okay, so this does stifle the trigger. So I think we just kill the Tidebinder. Play the Vents. So our opponent can theoretically land Restlessly Reef, flip Invasion of Amonkhet. If they do that, though, they're going to play another Invasion of Mama Cat. Let's discard the Bitter Reunion, actually. Found it. Draws a card. 
Go, go, Cruel Claw. Hit us something big. Hit you down to 14. Spin into a Bitter Reunion, which we are going to cast. We'll discard a Charming Scoundrel. We will discard a Shieldred's Edict. Draw two cards. Pass the turn. Bitter Reunion, not a, not a big hit. Not a big hit. It could have some value later. Hilariously, with all this milling, we still don't have anything great to Coiling Rebirth. Opponent. Even more invasions of Amonkhet. Well, we'll discard a infamous Cruel Claw and untap. Draw land. Well, I mean, here we come. Get in with the Cruel Claw. Hit ya. Uh, yes, we would like to Coiling Rebirth. And yes, we will gift you a card. And yes, we will take a Trumpeting Carnosaur. And yes, we will discard a Shieldred's Edict. Even if they have a negate here, we have another one. And this is what the deck wants to do. This is exactly what the deck wants. Opponent draws. Okay, double Carnosaur. Spin it to win it, spin it to win it into a Coiling Rebirth. Okay, which we will cast to get back a Charming Scoundrel. No gift. We will make a Treasure Token and then put the Bitter Triumph in hand. Pay the land? That was a pretty, that was a pretty good turn. That was a pretty good turn. That was a good Cruel Claw. You need a Wrath, really. And even if you have a Wrath, we have another Coiling Rebirth. Well, I mean, it kind of played out how we thought, which is when there's a Prophesidetic memory, our opponent's deck does pretty well. When there's not a Prophesidetic memory, it goes much, much worse. Opponent, I'm gonna fire up the Reef. Well, we will Bitter Triumph it, pay three. If they want to negate, they gotta tap the Reef, right? And then they still take the damage. Sure, we will pay for that. And opponent scoops it up, and that is Cruel Claw Power. Also, Coiling Rebirth. Coiling Rebirth is actually very interesting. When I first read Coiling Rebirth, I was kind of like, eh, there's so, like, the best reanimation targets are legendary, right? Like, Atroxas and Italies. But it turns out getting two Carnosaurs or two Vein Rippers is so good that I think it's actually worth building around, especially in a shell like this, where Cruel Claw is just like, it's such a good support piece, right? Even when we're whiffing, we're filling our graveyard, we're giving them some damage. When we don't whiff, like we saw hitting the Coiling Rebirth, it's kind of just game over when we high roll with Cruel Claw. It's a, it's a three drop that is, its floor is relatively high and its ceiling is kind of win the game. So yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep doing that. Cruel Claw, sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, we can keep this. We got the, the sand's actually kind of good. Assuming we, we can land off this Bitter Reunion, but we have the Cruel Claw. We can use Bitter Reunion to get Main Ripper in the graveyard, and we have the Coiling Rebirth, and we find the land. Well, play the land. Bitter Reunion. Definitely gonna pitch the Main Ripper. Draw a couple cards. And pass the turn. Didn't hit another land, opponent. Underground Ripper. I think we just Flesh Gorger here. In theory, our opponent is hopefully playing go for the throat is removal, and then they can't kill that, but then kill the, the Cruel Claw. That's the, the theory, anyway. Ether Channeler. Bouncing the Flesh... Wow. All right. Bounce the Flesh Gorger. Take three. Sure. Well, uh, replay the Flesh Gorger. Black Leaf Cliffs. Go. So this Cruel Claw, hopefully we can sneak in a hasty attack with it at some point. Found it. Demolition Field and Greed's Gambit. Okay. So I guess our opponent's probably planning on giving that to us. Opponent discard sacks. So if they have the Falcon, they can give us the Greed's Gambit, and we're probably in trouble. Blocks. All right. Well, we'll kill everything. And play another Flesh Gorger. Pass the turn. Well, let's see if they have the Falcon to give it to us. I'm sure that's the goal. Opponent. Yeah. All right. So opponent's going to give us the Greed's Gambit. All right. They <laughs> Combo. Opponent pulling up. The We're going to lose to the against the odds deck. Opponent gives us the Greed's Gambit. And passes. We draw a tap land. Well, play the Cruel Claw. Haste in the Cruel Claw. Go attacking. Hit ya. Come on. Spin it to win it. Spin it to win it. Bitter Triumph. I mean, we're going to kill it. We'll discard it. Actually, you know what? Let's not even cast it. I don't think we care. We're just going to decline. Play the Restless Vents. I'll discard a Bitter Triumph. 
Cruel Claw. Yeah, I don't know if we can win through this Greed's Gambit. Another Greed's Gambit. And copies the Greed's Gambit. Well, I can we win through this somehow? So we get to double Vein Ripper. I don't think that's enough though. Wow, opponent is, <laughs> I don't know if their deck's busted or if this is just the greatest hand of all time, but it's working for them. Uh, all right, Coiling Rebirth. Vein Ripper, give you a gift. Double it up, double it up. Opponent's gonna block and block. Uh, we will kill the bat. Drain you for eight. I got past the turn. Discard the land, sack the Vein Ripper, drain you for eight. Oh, double greens gambit, opponent land and. I mean, if they kill the Vein Ripper, then we scoop. There's no no coming back from that. Well, that was spicy. I mean, I guess if we're gonna lose, losing to something spicy is the way to go. <laughs> Watch Greed's Gambit be a real card post rotation. I assume they have another yeah, another Falcon. So opponent's gonna donate another Greed's Gambit. Opponent passes. So we can Carnosaur kill the bat. I mean, our opponent's drawn so many cards. They should have a go for the throw. Well, they let it go. Drain ya. Yeah, there's a go for the throw. Yep. All right. Well, that was interesting. All right, so we gotta bring in Liliana's. Bring in the dresses. Those are the big ones. We'll go down the Flesh Gorgers. I don't think they're actually that good. Basically, we need to keep our opponent from doing what they did there, which is resolving a Greed's Gambit. Without a Greed's Gambit, without a Greed's Gambit, their deck should be much less impactful. All right, let's try it like that. Well, that was about the best Greed's Gambit drive I've ever seen. Opponent just YOLO'd it and it worked. A duress in six lands. We can't keep that as... Oh, come on, Magic Gods. Why? Why, Magic Gods? Why, 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 why? All right. Well, a traditional magic fashion. Six lander into the one lander. And yeah. Well, all right. The opponent swamp and passes. We draw Black Cleave Glyph, so we'll play a bitter reunion. A turn late because we missed a land drop. Well, let's discard a Vein Ripper. Draw a couple cards. All right. Well, there's all the lands. Unfortunately, they're tapped, so we don't even get to, uh... Well, okay, we can play a Liliana, or attempt to. Resolves. Well, we will tick up Liliana. For brunch. We'll discard a Restless Fence. I mean, we're trying to piece it together with this super bad hand. Uh, maybe we should have kept six lands to rest. Found it. Discards impulse number three. No Greed's Gambit. Well, that's good. Let's... Infamous Cruel Claw. Is it worth it? I think we really need a land. That's what we really need. So let's put it to the graveyard. Play a Bitter Reunion. Discard a Bitter Triumph. Take up the Liliana. Alright, opponent has the Tidebinder. Sure. We will pass the turn. Opponent, Demolition Field goes to combat. Oops. And Virtue of Knowledge. Can we draw a land? No. Well, all right, Carnosaur. Kill the Tidebinder. Look at the, oh, we have drawn every Coiling Rebirth, but we don't have land number five. Have Take up Liliana, make you discard, pass the turn, opponent adapts. Now they have a Pandermonicon on the battlefield. Greed's Gambit, gonna double it up. Make a lot of bats, draw a lot of cards, and oh, what a way to lose. What a way to lose. Found it. Gonna duress. Yeah, we drew them all. Well, I mean, if we draw land, there is still some amount of hope. It's gotta be untapped. Opponent's gotta sack a bat. Gotta draw an untapped land here, the game's over. Opponent discards a farsight ritual, sacks a bat. Untapped land, fast land. All right. Well, I'm glad we could contribute to someone else's against the odds victory. <laughs> well, we'll see how disrupted we get, but in theory, we can pitch the Carnosaur for removal and then double it up with a uh, our Carn. Ooh. All right, let's play this. I think we actually just Charming Scoundrel here. 
to make a treasure. So this does let our opponent do the Heartfire Hero thing. But this lets us pitch Carnosaur next turn, turn four double Carnosaur off Coiling Rebirth, which is hopefully game ending on turn four. Opponent combat gets in, hits us with the Heartfire Hero down to 19 and passing. Well, more removal is fine. Our opponent is a blue deck, so we gotta be aware of counters. I don't know, is this like Spell Slinger? Heartfire Hero and is it? Opponent, another Heartfire Hero, sure. And goes to combat. Well, that's all right. Pitch a card. We're going for it. We're going for it. Blow up the Heartfire Hero. Take one. Opponent. Okay. There's no spell pier, so the time has come to have some fun. A Coiling Rebirth opponent. We noticed, friend, you were missing your land drop. Uh, we're going to give you a gift of a card to help you hit your land drop here. I feel bad. I feel bad for you, opponent. I feel bad that you're... <laughs> You're stuck on mana, so we're going to help. <laughs> there, you get a land. We get two Carnosaurs. They're both going to trigger. Spin it to win it, spin it to win it. Into a Cruelty of Gex. Yeah, we'll, we'll cast that. That seems good. Not a, not a bad turn four. Reasonable turn four. Let <laughs> An opponent doesn't even wait for the triggers to resolve. <laughs> doesn't even wait for the triggers to resolve. Oh my god. Uh, okay, well, I mean, that's the upside of this deck, right? The upside of this deck is... The nut draw is so good. The double Carnosaur, double Vein Ripper, turn four is just, it's a ridiculous, this is standard. This is standard. The question is, do we need duresses? Maybe. I kind of want the Aglazots. I also think these Flesh Gorgers are helpful. Even the Caught in the Crossfires. How do we fit all this stuff in? How do we fit all this stuff in? We don't actually want Liliana. Arena's still doing the, the helpful sideboard for us technique. We didn't get to see much of our opponent's deck. I'm actually a little confused about exactly what our opponent's deck is up to. Maybe something like this. Maybe we go three Vein Rippers. Let's try it like that. Uh, we need to hit two lands. We got a mulligan. We got a mulligan. All right. All right. Sand's still not great, honestly. We have Coiling Your Birth and Vein Rippers. So we really need some looting effects. Opponent, Heartfire Hero. Well, okay. Bitter Reunion is a looting effect. Uh, opponent. And gets in, hits us. Storm Catch Mentor. Now play the land. Bitter Triumph. Kill the Mentor. Discard the Vein Ripper. So opponent's like... Is it Spell Slinger, I guess? Gets and hits us. We have not seen this Heart Fire Hero growing much. Opponent passes. Play the theater. S we'll keep the swamp. Bitter Reunion. Discard Relentless Vents. Draw a couple cards. Ooh, that's a, that's a concern. That's a big, that's a big concern. Opponent combat gets and hits us. It doesn't even pump mice. Why are they playing? I'm so confused. Uh, how about a removal spell? Another bitter reunion. Well, let's play the theater. Cruelty of Gix. I mean, we're gonna put it to the graveyard. What are we discarding? I'm afraid to discard the swamp because we want it for this coiling rebirth. I'm afraid to discard a coiling rebirth because of counters, but I feel like we need to do something. Found it. Untaps. I mean, the question's gonna be, do they have counters? They could be. I don't know what our opponent's deck's doing. It is... It is all over the place. Bonnet combat. Obviously trying to be aggressive in is it and cast spells. Bonnet passes. Bitter Triumph. I do like Bitter Triumph. I mean, I think we got to go for it. Coiling Rebirth. Vein Ripper. Gift it. You got a counter? No. All right. Opponent untaps. Many cards in hand. Plus, we don't actually really mind this Vein Ripper dying because we can just do it again the next turn. <laughs> Witch Stalker's Frenzy. Gotta sack something. Sacks the hero. All right, drain ya, drain ya. Gain back a bunch of life. So we drop to 15. Opponent keeps her flood collar. Drain ya, drain ya. Down to 11. Come on, tap out, tap out. We promise we won't do it again. <laughs> Opponent, oh, we drew a duress, but we can't, hmm. Opponent. We're gonna wait, we're gonna duress. Well, let's take the shore up. Bowder to depths. Well, we know the coast is clear to do it again next turn. About it. Runs out the Heartfire Hero. And we're back up to 19, so we're not in, like, immediate danger of dying. Rabidnaw. Got a sack of creature. Sacks the hero. Gets drained, gets drained. Uh, our opponent's gonna be so disappointed. <laughs> They're gonna be so disappointed.
opponent's down to six. We haven't even attacked, have we? Opponent hits us. Well, opponent, I have a tiny bit of bad news for you. Just a, just a little bit. Uh, Coiling Rebirth. We're going to gift it. I think we'd like to get back this Vein Ripper twice. I think this should be game. <laughs> Two more Vein Rippers. Your go, about it. <laughs> and about it, scoops it up. And well, that was a uh, that was kind of that was kind of a massacre. Our opponent's deck. It's interesting. Uh, it looks a little scattered to me, right? Like. This one of the challenges of Bloombro is like Valley Floodcaller. The card's really strong. It's a great, great, great card. The problem is it refers to birds, frogs, otters, and rats, which means your one drop of Heartfire Hero is a little awkward. It's not getting pumped by it. I see why you want the Heartfire Hero because you're playing like Shore Up and Rabid Nod, so it makes sense on that level. It seems a little, I don't know. I don't know about the mixing and matching of creature types in the deck. I am curious to see if there's a Valley Floodcaller deck, though, because I feel like this card, if you can build around it in the right way, it is really, really good. But uh, for now, we'll just settle with a ripping some veins. <laughs> sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Cruel Claw Reanimator and Standard? And overall, we went 5-3 and three with the deck, so 63% win percentage in a relatively small sample size. But overall, the deck felt pretty solid. The deck has a huge amount of power. It can be clunky sometimes, like, we do have a lot of expensive cards, so occasionally we get a draw where we have, like, a lot of six drops and are kind of slow, but in general it felt pretty good. I think the finishers are really good. We know that Vayne Ripper is good. It sees play all the way back to Pioneer. We know Carnosaur is good. I think the most interesting cards in the deck are the big Bloomborough additions, Infamous Cruel Claw and Coiling Herber. So Infamous Cruel Claw, the card's really good. Like, the thing about Cruel Claw that makes it so good is its floor's pretty decent. Like, a 3-mana 3-3 three, three Menace is a fine creature. It's not like a 3-mana 1-1 one, one or some super underpowered creature where the idea is, like, you play this bad creature, but if you get in hit with it, it's going to be good. It's a fine creature. Menace actually is a huge deal on this card. It makes it so much easier to get in that attack. And then once we hit with it, it is kind of high risk, high reward. The good news is, like, the floor is pretty high, like I said. So even when we low roll and we hit, like, a Charming Scoundrel or a Bitter Triumph, it's not the end of the world. And we definitely got to see the high roll aspect, where when we just get a turn four Vein Ripper or hit the reanimation re spell to put something massive into play, it's a three drop that kind of just wins us the game. So I think Cruel Call is really good. Plus, it worked really well with Coiling Rebirth. And Coiling Rebirth the card... Then I gotta say, it's a lot better than I thought. When I first saw Coiling Rebirth, my initial reaction was, okay, it's fine, but it's probably just worse than Cruelty of Gix. And that is still true in a lot of decks. Like, what is the most powerful thing to reanimate in Standard? It's Atroxa, right? Like, that's kind of the best thing to reanimate. Uh, so, Coiling Rebirth doesn't do anything specifically well with Atroxa because it's a legend. So, if you're trying to reanimate something like Atroxa, I think the Cruelty of Gix is still just basically strictly better than Coiling Rebirth. On the other hand, the ability to gift a card to double up a Trumpeting Carnosaur or a Vein Ripper or even a Flesh Forger is incredibly strong. So if you're willing to build your deck in a way where your big reanimation targets are these cards rather than a Troxa or a Tally, then Coiling Your Birth is kind of absurd. It's especially good, I guess, with Trumpeting Carnosaur and Vein Ripper, really. Like, they both do different things. Carnosaur, when we play that, we just build such a massive board and get so much card advantage from two copies of its Discover 5. It's really hard to lose from that point, just from like so much value being generated. Vein Ripper kind of goes the other direction. Like two Vein Rippers are just so hard to deal with because of that ward sack of creature and every creature that dies drains for four. So if our opponent wants to kill a Vein Ripper, they're taking four at least, but then they're killing a Vein Ripper. So they're taking four more from that Vein Ripper die. So the absolute worst case scenario, barring a Sunfall, is that our opponent like does kill the Vein Rippers, but they're taking at least eight damage. We're gaining at least eight life. And really, it's more than that if they kill the second Vayne Ripper, too, because that's more death triggers. So it doesn't, like, guarantee that we win the game, but a fully powered Vayne Ripper and a 1-1 Vayne Ripper very likely to win us the game, unless our opponent specifically has a Sunfall. So, all in all, Crewfall of Reanimator... The deck's really sweet. If you like the idea of, like, cheating big things into play, I think it's a really cool and at least fairly competitive option for Blue Burrow standards. So that's Cruel Claw Reanimator. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. 
and I will talk to you soon. Looking for even more magic? Well, check out last week's Against Odds, where we made the most otters ever in standard. Or maybe the budget magic, where we saw the power of sunspine links in a big red deck.